powerful promoters who organize the matches, select the fighters, negotiate their purses, and arrange the lucrative pay-per-view broadcast rights. State boxing commissions are supposed to rein them in and maintain the integrity of the sport. But six states have no commissions at all, and most of the states that do exercise very little oversight. Thirty years ago, Congress dealt boxing's crooks and con men what amounted to a technical knockout, making it a federal crime to fix a prize fight. No one has ever been convicted under that law. But if you think that means fixed fights don't happen, think again. Take this fight in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, watched by millions of Americans on the USA cable network. The boxer in white trunks is Randall Tex Cobb, a part-time actor who once fought for the heavyweight championship of the world back in 1982. Off the Hollywood set and back in the ring, Randall Tex Cobb coming out of retirement tonight. His opponent in the black trunks is Sweet Sonny Barch. If Barch looks a little overweight and out of shape, that's because he is. Barch had had only three professional fights in seven years before this match, and it didn't last very long. A minute and ten seconds, to be exact. Well, after that, I think we have to cleanse ourselves and get some... The ringside announcer isn't the only one who didn't like the fight. The executive director of the Florida Athletic Commission, Don Hazelton, didn't think much of it either. It was a travesty. I mean, uh, Sonny went out and, and basically knelt down three times to get the fight over with. It was fixed. Yes. Hazelton is one of the nation's few state boxing commissioners who enforce the rules and the integrity of the sport. He attends just about every match held in Florida, overseeing everything from the judges' scoring to the testing of boxers for illegal drug use. It took him nearly a year, but eventually he got Sonny Bartsch to admit under oath that he'd thrown the fight. That's what this fight was, was a thrown fight. Bart says fixed fights are more common than most people realize, and he ought to know. He says he's fixed plenty of them, lining up fall guys to help other boxers manufacture impressive winning records. That was my job, is to make sure that some of these guys got wins and there were no chances taken. So you were a fixer? Well, that, that wasn't the way it started out. You know, that's what it became. Bart told his story not only to the Florida Athletic Commission, but also to Sports Illustrated and it's become part of U.S. Senate hearings on corruption in boxing, hearings co-chaired by Senator John McCain of Arizona. Anyone who questions the rationale for possible federal oversight of professional boxing senior side needs to look no further than the activities of Mr. Parker. Mr. Parker is Rick Elvis Parker, a boxing promoter out of Orlando, Florida, whom Sonny Bartsch says is the man behind all those fixed fights. Sonny is a liar and Sonny is a thief. And Sonny's a drug addict. And who is Rick Parker? Over the years, he's co-promoted matches with Don King, organized some of George Foreman's comeback fights, and in 1991, almost seized the crown jewel of boxing. And one of his fighters, Burt Cooper, in a legitimate match, fought for the World Heavyweight Championship against Evander Holofield and almost knocked him out. You were this close from sitting on the throne. Oh, absolutely. One punch away from tens of millions of dollars tens of millions of dollars all your dreams come true everything the windfall factor what do you mean the windfall factor i mean it comes all at one time parker is one of those characters you find only in boxing a former rock and roll promoter and professional pool shark he's what investigative reporter jack newfeld calls the missing link between boxing and professional wrestling and that's pretty much what don hazelton thinks of him too when he, uh, he shows up, it's, uh, it's uh, worldwide wrestling at its, uh, at its best. It's Barnum and Bailey. Uh, come to visit you. Con man? Oh, yeah, one of the f finest. Parker specializes in promoting heavyweights, especially white heavyweights, who are unlikely ever to win a title fight, but who, according to Parker's former business associate, Rob Russon, are famous enough and hopefully good enough to win a few good paydays people who he felt because of their name value or their previous track record could be resurrected or created into a situation for a big money fight, the, the white contender. So the idea was to take these fighters, white fighters, set up a, a bunch of easy fights for them, let them build a good record, a lot of wins, and then eventually get them a big payday fight against someone like George Foreman on television where they were probably going to get their brains scrambled. Well, the 
wasn't much concern for the final result, but yes, the mismatches were by design. Parker's latest white hope is a former professional football player whose only previous connection to boxing is that he once dated Brigitte Nielsen, the ex-wife of Sylvester Stallone, who played a boxer in the movies. From New York City, New York, here is the former all-pro defensive end for the New York Jets. Please welcome Mark Gastineau! At six foot six and 260 pounds, Mark Gastineau is big, white, and well-known. To Parker, that added up to a lot of money. That and Parker's connection to the George Foreman camp. Parker had had conversations with George Foreman's business advisor. And between the two of them had come up to a general agreement that if Parker were able to get Gastineau to a 12-0 record, Foreman would fight him. So that was the mission, 12-0 in George. And how much money would that be? produce for Rick Parker? Um, potentially a multi-million dollar purse. And all you had to do to get this multi-million dollar purse was to come up with 12 guys that Mark Astineau could beat. Correct. Ah, but that's not as easy as it sounds, because according to just about everyone in boxing, Gastineau's ring skills are, to put it kindly, limited. So Russian says at Parker's direction, he enlisted as Gastineau's first opponent, someone Gastineau was sure to beat. Derek Starfire Dukes, who'd had a few professional boxing matches, but made his living mostly as a professional wrestler. Why a wrestler? Because there is a basic group who have the pin me and pay me attitude. What did Parker tell you? Find me somebody who Mark Gastineau can beat, or was he saying, find me somebody who will take a dot? Find me someone who will take a dot. You're sure of that? Absolutely. The guy wasn't allowed to throw a punch. He was told to get out of there at the first opportunity. He couldn't throw a punch? Couldn't land a punch. Couldn't throw a punch. In this fight materialized, it came off? Yes. How long did it last? About um, 18 seconds, counting the 10 seconds it counts to count you out. 18 seconds? Of the first round. I didn't know you could get across the ring that fast. Gastineau charged like he would have if he were attacking the quarterback. They came together in the middle of the ring. He threw a couple punches. The wrestler crossed his arms across his chest, fell straight back, stayed there till the count of 10. Was it convincing? Oh, absolutely. I think he, Derek Dukes got hit really hard, is what I think. Derek Dukes is a professional wrestler. Part of his job as an actor. Right. Is to make people believe that he's hurt, believe that he's taken a lot I don't, of punishment. I don't know whether he was hurt or not. I assume that he was only person that probably really knows whether he was hurt or not is Derek Dukes. So he tracked down Derek Dukes to get the answer. Totally fixed. Total fixed fight. Dukes says he met with both Parker and Gastineau before the fight um, and agreed to take a dive for $600. And what about the knockout punch that lifted his feet several feet above the ground? It was, he says, a classic maneuver he learned in wrestling school. And he showed us how it's done. Okay. So you throw, throw your punch. You're good. You all I right? got you convinced, don't I? <laughs> Very simple. After the Dukes fight, Gastineau stopped his next opponent in Indiana. In Florida, he scored another first-round knockout. His next two victories came against Jimmy Baker and Jimmy Baker. The same opponent knocked out twice in two different states. Then there was his fight in Carthage, Missouri against Sonny Barch's brother, Kevin, a heavy crane operator who says he was offered $1,000 to take a dive. Like a dumbass, I say, yeah, you know, <laughs> $1,000 in my pocket, you know, go in there and get hit, you know, and <laughs> take a fall. You know, I knew what was going on. Sounded like pretty easy yeah. grant. Yeah, right. Yeah, it's easy money to me. <laughs> I've been hit before. <laughs> How much experience had you had fighting before the Gaston fight? Uh, ballroom. I hadn't had any professional experience, boxing gloves. I'm, I'm an untrained person. I went in that totally naked. <laughs> Did the Missouri Boxing Commission know this? Uh, no. No, I told them that I've had fights. How many? Uh, round 11. And what did you tell them your record was? Uh, it was like seven and three. You didn't have to tell them who you'd fought or? They asked a few names and, and uh, I, I told a couple of them. They never checked it out? No, well, they couldn't because they, they didn't meet me till that evening and they didn't have time to check it out. 
Mark Gastineau says that all of his fights were on the level, including the one against Kevin Barch. Rick Parker also says Kevin Barch is lying, and that it's all part of a plot cooked up by his brother, Sonny. This is, this is a story that is concocted by a vindictive former employee of mine who at one time was under a boxing contract with this promoter who was dismissed from, the boxing, uh, from my boxing contract and dismissed as my friend because he stole from me. Okay? Rick, Sonny Barch is not the only person that uh, is making these allegations. Really? Who are the other people? Rob Russin. Rob Russin is my former vice president who, who is only going along with the story in attempts to destroy me. Okay? He's tried to steal the boxer services of Burt Cooper and be his promoter. So you're saying that you're innocent? Yes. Parker insists he's never fixed a fight and maintains that Rob Russin, Derek Dukes, Kevin Barch, Sonny Barch, Don Hazelton, and others are all lying. These people that are, that are making these accusations about fight fixing are a bunch of low-life scumball pieces of crap, okay? Liars, thieves, drug addicts, or people that are motivated for greed or their own personal desire for gain. They want to harm me, want to destroy me for their own, for their own selfish reasons. Parker's plans for Mark Gastineau were destroyed on June 9, 1992, when Gastineau stepped into the ring for his 10th professional fight against someone who knew how to box and wasn't interested in taking a dive. This is what happened. Gastineau got up but lost the decision, all but ending Parker's dreams of that one big payday, at least with Mark Gastineau. How many Rick Parkers are there out there? There are a number of folks like this. You know who the, who the culprit is? We are, the commissions. We let them exist. When you do something wrong in Colorado, you pack it up and take it off and go someplace else, go up to Massachusetts, and we let them in, let them work. If you suspend a fighter because he's thrown a fight, and you won't let him fight, why do you allow people that handle these people to do business in your state? The commissions are at fault doing that. Even though he's under investigation for fixing fights in Florida, and you believe that he has fixed fights in Florida, he's out promoting fights and promoting fighters in other parts of the country. To my knowledge, he is, yes. Uh -huh. Hazelton has turned his investigation of Parker over to the Florida Attorney General's office for criminal prosecution. Whatever comes of the case, he says for now, he's satisfied that he's done everything he can. When you've got a problem in your house with pets, whether it's roaches or mice or whatever, sometimes it helps if you just turn the lights on.